You are now tuning in to the Going North Podcast with your host, best-selling author, professional speaker, and member of the John Maxwell team, Dominic Dom Brightman. And every Monday and Thursday, we're going to hear the voice of a different author sharing their gifts, stories, and expertise to help you charge forward in life. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the High Live Real Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, known as the Going North Podcast, we got another super special, awesome human for you today, my friends. And what makes him super special, awesome is the fact that he's a fellow millennial, a fellow millennial writer, y'all. That's right. My man decided to put pen to paper and publish his work, baby. So that's right. He has joined the business of immortality, my friends, at a young age. And he's got one heck of a powerful story. And my man is a man of great, strong character, y'all. I'm telling you, eight-pack abs of character, y'all. That's right. Six-packs got to get out the way. We ain't talking about beer. We ain't talking about abs. We're talking about eight-pack abs, y'all. Eight-pack abs of character. Because this wonderful gentleman right here has experienced almost every ounce of pain and loss that most go through in a lifetime. And it's only been in short 27 years of life. And this wonderful man right here is here to tell gripping stories of keeping a positive view on life's worst circumstances and to speak about the mindset and faith required to keep moving forward in this world one foot at a time. So let's give it up for the one, the only, good, young JR himself, James Ruvalcaba. How you doing today, James? I got to say, that's uh, if I could hire you to do that entrance for me every single place I go, I would. We, we need to communicate after the podcast, sir. But thank you so much for having me. It's, it's my, my pleasure. That was, uh, that was a Chicago Bulls in 96 entrance right there. I really felt like an athlete right there. So thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is one of the best parts of the show before the rabbit holes appear. <laughs> we got to try to dodge them. But that doesn't always work. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, hey, it's all good. It's all good. So, my man, fellow millennial author, man of faith, man who's been through some challenges, still alive to tell the tale, alive to tell the tale and inspire others to, well, basically, tell their own tales and avoid fox tales. So, my goodness, man, as you know, as you know with all introductions, you know they're not allowed to be, I'd say, 17 days long. So, am I filling in any cavities I missed about you, James? No, you, uh, that, may, that may have been the best introduction of my life right there, to be honest with you. You didn't miss nothing at all, exactly. Uh, if I could contribute all, I'd give it a little background myself here. Um, I'm 27. I'm uh, originally from uh, Los Angeles, California. I'm a LA guy over here. Uh, you know, burning up in the heat as we speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, prior to uh, writing or so, I used to work with uh, the special needs community. So I used to do... Uh, teaching assistant uh it's one of the very few things i could say that i've checked all the boxes and i've done just about everything you could possibly do in the field from classrooms to facilities to in-home care out-home care in the community literally everything i got into that field probably two or three days after i graduated high school so i started working at the same high school i graduated on so if i graduated on a friday i enjoyed the weekend and i started that same monday funny story there is uh, on my first day of the job there wasn't exactly id badges provided so when I walked in, one of the teachers thought I was uh, pranking her and she actually called the principal and the security and they asked me to the office. <laughs> and um, I, uh, yeah, basically almost, I would have got a detention if I was still going to class, but since I was working there, nobody had, a, nobody believed me. So uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the little funny uh, story right there. But um, I got into the field on a serious note uh, due to my sister. So my sister who passed away 15 years ago, she had disabilities herself. So uh, when I saw the in-home care that my mom and dad provided for her and all the employees who came in and out, the doctors, the nurses, the staff, in and out, I constantly just seen all of it happen. And, you know, as a little kid, I, I had NFL aspirations, but, you know, uh, I, you know I, uh, I'm a man of a Hispanic heritage here. So uh, my aspirations and my height didn't match. <laughs> I, uh, I, only grew, <laughs> I, I only grew to five foot nine and I had NFL dreams of being six foot five and that just didn't happen here. <laughs> so you don't really think about it as a kid, but I kind of seen the in and the ins and outs of all the staff helping my sister and making her life as enjoyable as possible. 
that I was like, you know, I think this is what I want to do. And I wanted to do it as an ode and a dedication to her. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, 10 years that flew by and I had stuck in the field. And now I'm thankful, you know, thank God I'm able to say that writing is my full-time job here. So that's a little bit of background about me. I'm sure we can get into sports and so many other things. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of sports. Uh, I'm the typical LA guy, Lakers, the Kings, UCLA, uh, the Dodgers, all you name it. So that's my sports side. And then, you know, I have a, I'm a, I'm a grown child. I'm still into, uh, I say with no shame at all. I'm still a big fan of wrestling. WWE yeah. yeah, I have no shame on it. I will go back and forth with you all day on wrestling. We could do a whole podcast episode on that, you know. So I'm into sports, wrestling, video games. Uh, I'm on Xbox still in my free time. And um, I squeeze in the gym every once in a while. The gym is probably one of my preferred hobbies. But, yeah, that's that's where I find myself at, you know. It's between, stuck between one of those four holes right there. Wrestling, Xbox, sports, or uh, at the gym. And oh man, that's what I'm talking about, baby. It's always great to connect with fellow wrestling fan too, baby. Who's your favorite wrestler, man? Oh man, you know, I'm sure you're gonna hear the the Stone Cold and the Rock, but to be honest with you, my personal favorite is Shawn Michaels. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> my, Shawn Michaels is the, is the goat to me. I just had an argument with my friend a few days ago online about the he says Stone Cold, and none of us are wrong. But the man who is by far the best in ring talent. You know, the founder of DX, there's just so many positive things this man's done for the world and for wrestling. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing. He was able to turn his life around and found Christianity when he was going through his battles, too. So, you know, it's a um, that's my guy right there. I fight tooth and nail for Shawn Michaels. That's that's my guy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. My man getting the gold medal already, baby. HPK, baby. That's right, man. That's right, indeed. Yes, indeed. The GOAT, baby. Best finishing move in all sports. So, so good that Indy guy stealing a slap the knees all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's what I'm talking about. Good people indeed, man. And, wow, my man's definitely been through some rough upbringings, man, because uh, so, so sorry for your loss of your sister, man. That's definitely rough, man. That's definitely rough. Um, Wow. Like dealing with so much grief and not even 30 yet. My goodness. So how, with really with all this grief that you had to, that you basically have to deal with, like what's, what helps keep you going, my man? You know, it's to, it's to leave a, a, a great legacy behind, um, you know, with the rough upbringing and uh, to piggyback off my sister, that my sister was unfortunately the effect of a, uh, was a domino effect. You know, there's that old saying, death comes in threes. And uh, I think my family somehow, some way, you know, God bless your souls. But uh, we found death and we're seven in a row. She was the first of seven that con that consecutively passed away. And uh, it went from, uh, excuse me if I missed up the order, but it went from my sister to my grandpa, to my grandma, to my aunt, to my aunt, to my uncle. And then uh, I believe another uncle and then to my uh, fiance. So if it wasn't for the upbringing, if it wasn't for the constant loss, I wouldn't have, my family, I wouldn't have been prepared to even handle my fiance situation. So, you know, we tried to turn a complete negative into a positive. So I was, you know, to an extent, my family and I were already turning tragedy into triumph every single day, you know? So that was the reason why we even were prepared for that situation. We, we took that with no questions asked, with no debate. That was just a simple yes. And it was get straight to work with my fiance. So. You know, it was a the upbringing was kind of kind of rough, but you know, I want to continue to leave a, pocket, a positive legacy moving forward. You know, there's so many obstacles at any single point. I think, you know, it's not my cup of tea, but I could have been justified at any point to just stay in bed and never get up, never get out. But that's just not the way I conduct myself. You know, especially when all those people brought me nothing but happiness and joy. I didn't want to honor their legacies by being negative and walking around. You know, with a let's say like a little cloud of rain pouring rain on you. You know, like I didn't want to walk around with like that. I didn't want people to feel the energy like, oh, you know what? If I'm walking in, you're going the other way. You know, so I want to be warm and welcoming. You know, and that's that's just personal loss. You know, all the all the you know the bullying. You know, growing up. You know, like on the lower tier, the middle class. You know, losing our house a couple of times, being homeless. You know, the very very. I can go on all day about it. You know, but this is not a. a I feel bad for me story. This is actually a story to tell you that no matter how how much I went through, how much all my family went through, we still turn into that 
you know, negative into positive. And every day I take a step forward is just another example of that. And I just want to leave a legacy that, you know, don't let don't let those obstacles and the turtles in life hold you down. Don't let that be an anchor on the boat. You know, you can continue to push forward. You know, you can do it with a smile on your face. And uh, as of how we just started this introduction, you know, with a sense of humor, you know, I never lost my sense of humor throughout the whole process. And that's one thing I advise to everybody. Never lose your sense of humor and never lose your smile. And don't ever feel guilty about it. You don't, no matter what you're going through, you don't need to feel guilty about the, continue just to put one foot on forward, put the 10 toes down, make that conscious decision that I'm going to have a good day today and have yourself a good day. Yeah, man. Amen to that, dude. My goodness, seven losses in a row. That's not, definitely not good. It definitely prepares you for strength. And I'm guessing since writing is your full-time job, I'm guessing those losses and having to rate, basically turn that pain into power and those tragedies into triumphs, is that what keeps your writing going? Because it's a rare occasion where someone on the show is actually a full-time writer. So how are you able to make that happen, my man? Yeah, honestly, in a simple term, it, it's God's grace how this happened. If I if I had to say, I probably would have been a personal trainer, to be honest with you. Writing aspirations were, I I probably have the most non-common book writing background that at least I, at least what people in arms reach me have, like other authors I've spoken to. I've heard, uh, I've heard philosophers, I've heard thinkers, I've heard people who've got A pluses on their English papers for as long as they've been born and raised. Myself, uh, I was in special ed English. I was okay with it. You know, I was okay at English. I didn't struggle very much, but I was in the slower learning English class. So it was the, the mainstream class, and then they had the slower learning, which is what I was in, and then you had full on like special needs and disabilities. So I was right there in the middle. So I, I didn't necessarily have the gift to write. I just had little sprinkles that gave me confidence to do it. I'll tell you two quick little funny stories here. One time I tried to ditch my senior project in high school and I try to be the little smart guy trying to outsmart the principal I missed my sixth period class purposely every single day so I wouldn't have to do a presentation and the presentation was a business powerpoint about how like a business plan so every I did all the work and I just I was scared to present one day the principal grabbed me in my first period grabbed me right by the collar and took me straight to that sixth period and he said if you think you're so smart, now we'll see how smart you are now. And he told me to present that same project six times in a row. And I went from first period to sixth period, and I kept presenting that same project. Instead of doing, you know, thinking I was outsmarting everybody, if I had just <laughs> did it, I would have just did <laughs> 10 simple slides, and I would have, you know, my hands are clean. But because I thought I was smarter than everybody, I actually had to do the 50-slide uh, presentation on my own six times in a row. And as I kept going through, I'm – bowling i got water i'm i got the floodgates coming out of my eyes i'm embarrassed everyone's pointing and laughing at me in between classes people are pointing at me and uh the embarrassment just kept stacking on and on by the time i got done with the six i i don't have a, a tragedy the triumph story where six period i had figured it out i was still crying to be honest with you <laughs> I, I didn't turn it around by six period it was so embarrassing but you know i always told myself nothing will be as bad as that presentation and then second I was in, uh, I had a couple of stints in college and I was in, uh, uh, I believe w the last English class I was required before I got my degree. And I, I'll never forget her name. Her name is uh, Mrs. Brooks from, uh, she was a nice, nice professor from England. And as I was writing, uh, she just continued to tell me like, I don't know, James, you kind of have a gift for this. And, you know, you kind of just assume like, oh, a teacher's just going to, you know, gas you up, pump you up so you can continue working. But I held on to those words. So as I continue writing, I just keep remembering, I was like, you know what, the day I get to speak, you know, to someone like your, of your caliber on the other side, it, it's not going to be as bad as that day in high school while I was presenting that project. And then plus, I always just heard, you know, in the little British accent, Mrs. Uh, Brooks in my head as I was writing, like, you know what, if it wasn't for her, maybe I would be scared or timid to continue to pursue this. So that, that's what kind of, that, those are the little seeds that were ingrained in me to get me to where I'm at today. And in terms of making it full um, full time, it's honestly, it's God's grace to do that. Like I said, I had aspirations. I, I thought of a party planner. I thought about being a personal trainer. I thought about, you know, uh, becoming a teacher full time. I've done so many of these things, but I've been so blessed in many other ways that, you know, right when I was about to, so to speak, get off the freeway, get off the exit, you know, special needs and kind of, you know, find my way, I would get right back. I would get off on the exit and get right back onto the on-ramp. But I just need to continue to learn lessons throughout the 10 years in the special needs field, talk to other people, learn other backgrounds, other heritages, how to conduct myself. And 
as I just kept growing and growing and with COVID happening, it presented the opportunity to start writing. And uh, here I am today. You know, it's, it's all thanks to my background. It's literally every single ups and downs of my life in the past has brought me here today, you know, and I'm very thankful to God that I'm able to call this a full-time job, a full-time commitment. And just to think uh, there's a de there's a demand for me out there, which is crazy because um, most times I can't even get a high five when I walk into the house, <laughs> let alone like get, have a demand for somebody you want to be here. Most of the time, my family's trying to buy me tickets to get me out of the house, let alone like you know, <laughs> be, people wanting me to be around, you know, so it is a, it's a tremendous blessing. Uh, well, that's good, my man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So is it like copy editing or just like ad copy is this, or is it something totally different with the writing? Oh man, it's uh when when I got started on the whole the first book, I had written already three books prior to the first one coming out. I just felt like it was like a, a diary. It just felt like it was just never ending the pen the pad. Uh there's there's some articulation and some beautiful words in there that I think it had to be God writing this because there's some, I said I looked at some of the books and some of the words and the writing and the way it's structured. I'm like, I don't know if I got the skill set to do that, to be honest with you. I'm like that <laughs> some some of these things are mind blowing where I'm like, I'm not sure if that's me or not, but you know, I am very, very thankful that I was able to tell my story and there's a, a audience for it. Um, I don't, I, I wish I had a, a very true, honest answer for you to why, how this all came about, you know, how this, how this isn't God's plan, you know, it's beyond me, but I think that's my only solid answer to it, you know, and I'm very thankful that um, while being on tour, people have, uh, you know, approached me about being on tour. I've been approached for other projects about the book. It's, it's a very true blessing to be able to say I could focus my time onto this. Not that I would have lost going back into the special needs field, you know, during COVID because I, I could go back. But it's a, it's a true blessing to say that I'm able to tell my story and my fiance's story and to be able, never for a financial gain, but to be honest, it's just to get the exposure. This is why I asked, this is what I promised her. And this is the promise I'm going to come through on. There you go. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because this, um, yeah, this book definitely is definitely a uh, powerful and definitely a powerful one too, especially <laughs> probably the dead horse with the fact that being so young, dealing with so much grief and still being able to power through all of it and still make a living and still try to get the message out there and really just reminding people of the fact that you no one knows the day or the hour even no matter how old or young you are like no one's invincible like 2020 showed us that and even before 2020 you've learned a multiplication multiple occasions that it's so darn true that no one is invincible we all have our weaknesses and we just have to admit that we have to be grateful for what we have so besides being able to live and share the story of both you and your lovely fiance who is in RIP mode right now. What is probably another major lesson or two that you've gained from all of this that you've had to recover from and still probably dealing with? You, you know what? It, it's, I would say first and foremost, I would probably say acceptance. Acceptance sounds very easy, but you know, I think that's what we all have trouble with the most is accepting the fact that this just happened. And it's, I don't say this in a, a nonchalant brushing it off way, but once you kind of come to terms with it is what it is, you didn't ask for this, you didn't want this, but it just came about. You just have to accept the fact that this is the reality of the situation and this is how you're going to push on from it. It took a, it took quite a while, you know, because as I was going through the process, um, I came to find out that, you know, I was grieving in my, in my house, but, you know, the world doesn't stop. You know, I had to go back to work. I had to go back to the cubicle. I had to go back into the field. And as I continue doing that, you know, um, the best way I could put it is that uh, I go to the gym about four or five times a week and the same guy I see in the corner entrance on the treadmill. As soon as I walk in, I look at the corner and the same man's on the treadmill. Before I left during this whole loss process, he was on the treadmill. As soon as I came back, he's still on the same treadmill. It just shows to me that like the world doesn't stop. You know, he still was going, you know, and when you go through all the grief and, uh, you know, you and the pain and all the, the thoughts, you really think like the world would stop. You kind of, like, once you step foot outside, you look around, you're like, wow, the world didn't stop. Like, don't you know who just, don't you know who just left us today? You know, it's, um, it was very, very hard. Uh, it was a very hard pill to swallow, but you start to understand that if the world stopped for every single time somebody passed, the world would never spin. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. even as we do this podcast, somebody's hearing 
uh, you know, the news right now. So it's a uh, blessing, many blessings to everybody going through something, but you know, it was acceptance. And then two, I would say it was to, it was to find peace again. And what, what I mean by that is uh, I think we all deal with to a certain extent, the uh, um, staying in the moment and what, how that ties in with peace is that I think we're also worried about the anxieties of the future and the would have, could have, should have of the past. I think if you stay in the moment, you can kind of conquer your thoughts and you won't be able to, you won't be at war with yourself so much. I was very blessed and it's, um, very many thanks to God here that I, I didn't have any regrets. I don't know how to explain it fully, but I felt like I was really truly in the moment throughout our whole five-year relationship. I don't have a moment where I was like, what was I thinking back then? How did I not do this? No, I was, I was in the moment. I like when you're going through, you don't know you're in the moment until you're out of it, you know? So I was kind of like, I was very, very thankful that I was able to be there. I didn't have any would have, could have, should have. And if I did have them, I had to conquer them immediately. Cause I'm like, if it was meant to happen, it would have happened. My only true regret I had was never, she had never went to Disneyland. And I never was able to make that happen. But I think as human beings, if that's the only regret I could possibly have in a relationship, I think I did more than enough for my job. So it's to conquer the would have, could have, should have the past. And don't fear the anxieties of tomorrow. Just stay in the moment and put one foot in front of the other one day at a time. And I think you'll be able to conquer it. So, you know, acceptance and finding peace is what I really have to battle with. But once I got it, I think that's what puts me in the position I'm at today. Ah, sounds good. Sounds good indeed. Definitely. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Especially with acceptance, because sometimes acceptance can be hard for us. A lot of us, <laughs> especially uh, nowadays in the mirage of success, thanks to social media, folks, they don't really want to accept reality. Sometimes they want to just live on the gram and do it for the gram and the TikToks and the clubhouses where everybody wants to be the guru. At the end of the day, <laughs> nobody really is a guru, to be honest. Like, there's really no real gurus out there. There's just folks who may have higher levels of knowledge and wisdom because they may have been on the planet a little longer and they may have done something a little longer than most. And they may know a couple more things that work and don't work that can help others who may want to get on that same path. So definitely acceptance, man. Definitely powerful right there, man. Powerful indeed. Man, oh, man. So for those who need to pick up the book and get into the story, what can they expect from the book besides the powerful lessons of overcoming grief and turning your tragedies into triumph? I would say it's to keep, to keep your sense of humor and to keep everything light. You know, let's tie this back from the very beginning. We were talking about wrestling. You know, my fiance was a humongous wrestling fan. She used to actually have the WWE Women's Championship in her uh, back car. That was what I got her for Christmas one year. And she used to rock that with pride. Um, so, you know, to tie it back to that in the story, I, I don't, I, I, I speak about it a bit, but there would be instances where we would keep our sense of humor there and it would always be in the forefront. Like, even though we knew how bad the situation was, we knew it was, you know, a uphill battle, but we just constantly just kept, fighting and kept joking and kept things light so to do that she would walk around when uh she started losing her hair she started saying like oh hey james look i look like stone cold now when she went bald oh. and she would <laughs> and she would walk around with it and like have no problem she would be you know crushing cans together drinking and chugging like stone cold would you know oh. it's, it's like that we just never lost our sense of humor and that's what made the journey you know although a tough one a easier one an easier pill to swallow to an extent she was so gullible and so lighthearted about the how the seriousness of the situation is that it most of the time it seemed like it was a joke and most of the time it was just like hey she told my uh brother and i one time she walked in so uh, she kicked her door down and uh she started flexing on us and we we're like annabelle what are you doing and she's like oh i just hit the scale with the doctor i uh i'm 120 now and she was she started at like uh over you know i don't want to say her exact way but she started at a heavier weight and then she went down and it was so funny because she's like we're like annabelle like that's not how you lose weight like you do it this way she's like i don't care like this is what the chemo did for me look how look how good i look now you know instances like that we just never lost our sense of humor you know and i think on top of all the lessons it's honestly different components that you could add and apply to your own life here it doesn't need to be as extreme as cancer if you if you could relate to me i'm so sorry because i don't want anybody to relate to me i know that's the farthest from the truth i'm sure there's there was millions before me there'll be millions after me unfortunately but, you know, in the current moment right now, if you could relate to me, I wish you didn't. 
you don't have to actually see all the pain I had to witness with my own eyes and all the, you know, all the grief I heard with my own ears, you know, and it's a tough situation, but we really, really did make the most of it, you know, and if you don't go through cancer, you go through a different loss, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. It's always an apples and oranges comparison. Our pains are never the same. So who, if you, even if you didn't go through loss, if you're just going through depression, anxiety, anything, I think you could use the lessons and principles here to kind of understand, like, let me get those components and apply it to my own life. I think that's the beauty of it because there's just so many different ways to dissect the story. I think that's what was one of the goals. You know, I think we could touch uh, younger audiences, older audiences, everything in between, black, white, yellow, green, any any color, like I, there's there's no boundaries to it and there's no particular way to handle all this. So I think once you dissect it and apply it to your own life, I think it's, see just on the sky's the limit on this one so just you know read the story and see you know if, if we helped you out fantastic that's what you know that's why i put the story out there for uh if you didn't walk away with anything at least i know for sure you're gonna walk away with a great laugh or two yes indeed yes indeed be sure to pick up some copies of this book if you haven't all read it halfway through this interview y'all good stuff indeed Good inspirational stuff, and my goodness, like that, <laughs> she was definitely a keeper. Yeah, she made fun of herself losing there, saying she looked like Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was freaking gold. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, very few people do that. Heck, even reminds me of a, I think a past guest. Um, I believe Connie Bramer. I think she was funny enough two o two o one, if I'm not mistaken. She uh. Uh, she was a ball of energy that when she was talking about her stories of breast cancer and the fact that she had to make fun of herself because uh, there was a time when she actually, um, <laughs> it was a time where she finally got a brick from all the chemo and whatnot, and she lost all of her hair too, and then she had to laugh at herself, and the rest of her family laughed with her too because when she got, she basically went out with her family, and she dressed the best she did in a long time, and as they were walking, the tr one of the tree branches caught her wig and left it looking bald. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they all just busted out laughing afterwards. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, humor is definitely a gift. Humor is definitely a gift. So my goodness, so since my man's on this interview tour with podcasts, blogs, and all sorts of mediums to get the message out there and to get the words out there and the story out there, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? I'm sure there's just so many different questions that could be asked about this. You know, it just very depends on your perspective of what angle you attack the book at, you know, and what set of lenses you're reading this book with. Um, honestly, overall, it was the best thing I could say if I was just to get, asked, to get asked one simple question. It was just like, how did you guys do it? I just think something as simple as that. And uh, once I'm able to articulate the question and articulate my perspective and details onto it, I think it's 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 easy and more understandable from the reader's perspective to grasp what I was going for in this book. And just by the question alone is what, well, as we were just speaking about, is that that's where I think you're going to be able to understand all the components of the book and understand all the lessons and the perspectives onto it. Because in sheer length, the book is not long at all. And I purposely made it that way to so tie back to us being millennials that I actually had a 400 page version of this book. Oh. And uh, I, and I sampled it out to the TikTok generation, as I like to say, the Gen Z. And they gave me very, very honest feedback. And they said, uh, yeah, we can't read this. Like, this is too long. There's no way we're ever going to read this. Like, you know, we love you, but, you know, we're not going to read this. And I always thought working in an office, you know, I, w I always thought about, uh, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, like, Monday morning, uh, Monday morning quarterback, where you know, <laughs> kind of gets by the water cooler after the football game on Sunday. And everybody just starts talking, you know, like, and everybody thinks they're an NFL quarterback, you know. Of course, it's, it's uh, hindsight is 20 so it's very easy for everybody to be like, how could this quarterback have made that throw? With the combination of that that and TikTok, I kind of just thought, like, you know, Sports Center goes through these highlights. And most of my coworkers I know weren't sports fans, but they just try to make general conversation. So I thought Sports Center just provides a couple of highlights here and there, and it gives you the idea, and it, you grasp the idea of the game and the outcome. Uh, so I put the TikTok generation, or maybe just TikTok in general, and the sports center and the Monday morning quarterback ideas and concepts all together. I thought, all right, let me write a book where you're able – it's short and length because it's going to keep your attention. You're going to want more. And plus, you're, you're going to be able to catch all the highlights of our story and the lowlights to an extent and be able to grasp the story 100%. 
I feel like you didn't need every single gruesome detail in there because I could have went in there into that realm. But I feel like where it's currently at right now, the way it sits, I think it's best. I think it's uh, I think I kind of chopped the pill up in half and made it a little bit easier to swallow. And I think if I had went a little bit more in depth about the the pain and the real struggle of it, not that I hit some of it in the story, but I think if I really went into it, I think it would have been a little bit too much raw emotion for somebody to handle and to kind of just sit there and take at one time. So I thought it was best for the length it was at. And, you know, it's, it's thanks to the millennials and thanks to Gen Z, it's thanks to TikTok, you know, Sports Center and Monday Morning Quarterback is the reason why this book is the way it is. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You're so darn right, man. <laughs> and funny enough, you probably heard me say a million times, like, the reason why I write my books, the reason why they're – so lies because people ain't got time for the pages man like you're so right <laughs> like people ain't got time for the well we got time for it. let me drop that lie part people have time for it they just don't want to dedicate the attention for it 100 <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. yeah man yeah man it's like because i mean books like 40 laws of power the bible like those books like yeah that i, I can i can glaze well then again, <laughs> Bible, I could try to blaze through that one, but that didn't work out too well because I get so caught in the scripture. It's like, oh, nope, got to gotta meditate on this for a bit. <laughs> so, but 40 laws of power, speed reading, yeah, I can blaze through it. But yeah, man, definitely got to reach the folks who need it at right where they are, keep it nice and light form. And to be honest, small books are the wave now because you're so right. Like it, not just with like TikTok and Gen Z, millennials, but heck, even some older folks too might still prefer the smaller books too because it's like, hey, I got the smartphone too, and this thing is a zombie apocalypse device. I got to swipe up too, you know. It's like, <laughs> they can yeah. appreciate it too, man. So definitely some good stuff. Definitely some good stuff. So what's the next big project for you, my man? Because you got this great project here. Heck, even actually, funny enough, are you going to do this uh, one book on audio anytime soon? Uh, you know, it's actually funny you mentioned that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was approached by a couple of gentlemen about the opportunity to do it. Uh, you know, I never I never really grasped the idea of it. I kind of just thought, uh, I'm not too sure. And, you know, I, I was kind of still lingering about the demand. You know, at the time when I first was doing this project, I was like, is anybody even going to want to hear my voice? You know, or I'm like, if they don't want to hear it, can I find somebody who could read it with the same passion and the same fire that I would speak on it as? So I really just sat on the idea. I just kind of let the flame dimmer and just go away. But once these gentlemen approached me about the idea, I've definitely considered it, to be honest with you. Uh, I think as more and more as the demand grows for this book and the more the audience continues to build, if there's a true demand out there and people really want that, you know, and want to hear my voice, I think that's a beautiful gift and that's an honor in itself that people would even want that. Um, so it's, it's just kind of, kind of have to play by, you know, day to day to see if the, if the man is there, I'd be more than happy to read it. If not, you know, I think the book still, you know, packs a punch and still, you know, punches the eardrum or two, you know, with all these lessons, you know, gets the brain rattling. So uh, either way, it's but it's definitely been a consideration of mine. I definitely thought about it. Yeah, man, I should probably do it. Like, hey, reach more people that way. And good news, funny enough, like one of the past guests of the show, she was lucky that her book was also – in audio form because a couple approached her about her it was a mystery novel to believe um, ej moran she actually had a murder murder novel and the couple the wife her husband was blind so he couldn't even read the book and she ended up buying both the audiobook and the physical book so they can read it together so man if you can do the audio too man folks will and the thing is it's, it's your it's your book it's your store with you and your fiance like you got the passion you got the drive like Heck, even if, if you want, maybe get your own equipment, maybe, and record it yourself, maybe and have someone out, maybe outsource the final piece and get it done that way, man, because, like, you'll reach more people that way. And another thing, too, about the <laughs> – about this day and age is that a lot of people, if if they may not make the time to read the book, they'll definitely love to listen to the book while they're doing other things. Yeah, you're 100% right on that. You know, I definitely appreciate the, the the game and the knowledge you dropped on me. So, you know, I might I might have to pull pin the pad and start making some phone calls after this uh after this interview. Yeah, man, that's right, that's right, man. It's like get that mess in as many forms as possible. That's probably one of the mistakes I made. In my first book was not releasing the audio 
in conjunction with the book. Now, granted, that probably would have slowed up the process, but hey, it's all good. You live and you learn. At the end of the day, it's like, eh, folks will catch up eventually. It's all good. It's all good. Well, and speaking of catching up, we're coming down to the magical question. And since my man's in his late 20s, we're going to adjust it just a bit. So if you're to wake up tomorrow and you were 21 again, but this time in the current year of 2021, with all of your amassed knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? I would tell myself to keep my eyes to the sky and understand the to enjoy the process and enjoy the, the journey of it. You know, there was days where I was staring up at the wall, frustrated, uh, couldn't understand why I had to wait. Uh, patience level was through the roof. I, I had no patience whatsoever. I, I couldn't I couldn't grasp what God was doing in my life. I couldn't understand the concept of timing. It was, uh, it was very hard for me to get that because I felt like, you know, due to all the losses I've experienced, I feel like you're not guaranteed tomorrow. And because of that, I always feel like, you know, if I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, I, I'm ready right now. I was ready yesterday and the day before. You know, I, my mom always uh, taught me this as a child, like, you don't have to get ready, you stay ready. And uh, because of that mentality, I always felt like, you know, like, maybe I just, you know, I've got to stay prepared, you know, and you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So, you know, I could never grasp, like, why, could, why not today? If, these, if a big blessing was coming my way, why couldn't that just happen today, you know? But um, as you start to understand the bigger picture about how timing works, timing is everything. And if I had released my book one day earlier, one day later, I could have missed all the opportunity. I could even miss this opportunity to be on your uh, amazing platform, your, you know, your beautiful show. So, you know, I really would just tell myself to enjoy the process and understand that everything is happening for a reason. And timing is everything. Just don't question the timing. God is never early and he's never late. He's always right on time. So that's what I would have told myself. Okay, man. Definitely say that again, man. That's right. That's right, man. My man dropped that hot fire. You're so right about that timing, too. <laughs> yeah, that timing is real, man. Like, we we want it now. We want it yesterday. And guys, like, nah, fam, it'd be all right. You got to wait, buddy. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness well i usually switch over to the point as to where you can find you on all your social medias but something just popped in my head about faith since i usually like to ask fellow christians about their faith man so what keeps your faith strong and what allowed you to come to christ a man since you're a fellow man of faith especially a young millennial of faith I would say, you know, there's been just too many examples of God's goodness in my life. You know, if it was how my family and I scrambled to even think how we could have a Thanksgiving dinner or a turkey on our table for Thanksgiving, and somehow, some way, there was three turkeys on our table. You know, um, if it was Christmas time and we had no money for gifts, somehow, some way, somebody would win a gift card, and then all of a sudden, we were going crazy as the 99 cents are making the best of the situation. Um, there's just been too many examples of God's goodness. And I always think like, if God's got me this far, why would he let me, why would he stop now? That's what keeps my eyes to the sky. I, you know, into the story because it ties into faith. It, it, I understand both sides of the coin. I understand what it feels like to question God. I know what it feels like to not want to keep your eyes to the sky anymore. You look more towards the ground. Not that you believe on that side, but more that you just can't look up there. You can't imagine how could somebody let that happen? You know, I've, I've gone through that inner battle. I think we all have have to an extent you know no matter what we're going through so um i understand both sides of the coin so i can i can never be the judge i can never slap anybody's hand for conducting themselves the type of way or using whatever perspective they do to get them moving forward um so it's just in my own personal opinion it's just been too many he's been there too often for me not to realize it you know and if i if i didn't realize i'd be naive not to realize what he's done you know and that's just for the things i've that i know have come through i have no idea and I may not ever find out about all, all the things he's prevented from coming my way all the ugliness all the you know possible crashes what, whatever harm that could have came my way I have no idea I probably never will will understand what he's preventing from coming my way so it's a it's a great gift you know I'm, I've been very blessed to when I run into a lesson when it comes to faith I have a very humongous lesson when it comes to quick turnaround so it's kind of like a homework you know I'll get the lesson and then within the day or the next week, you know, within the week or so, there'll be that lesson of what I just learned, you know, uh, people coming and going, you know, uh, keep your eyes to the sky, putting one foot in front of the other. 
uh, understanding God's timing. Some of these things and some of these concepts you read in the Bible and elsewhere, you just, you, it makes no sense. It used to make no sense to me. I used to just not, not, not discredit it, but question it at times like, okay, this is a little extreme here and there, but you know, once I, once I gave in and once I stopped being stubborn and once I really stopped fighting it is the moment where the domino effect kind of happened and the floodgates had opened and, you know, the blessing of this book coming out, because as I said earlier, I could never imagine this happening. And to think that this is the the platform I get to have and speak on, you know, for our story, it's beautiful because there's so many people, as we were stating earlier, that are probably getting that message as they speak right now, that they just lost a loved one. And, you know, it's not that they, they're wrong for not honoring their loved one, but a lot of people are going through that grief and they don't want to speak about it again. They kind of just want to let the person rest and they don't, it's a lot of pain. It takes a lot of strength to be able to speak and communicate the way you and I are about this. So there's no exact blueprint about it, but to me, I just, I just know there's hundreds of millions of people who passed away and I'll never know their name, unfortunately, but I wanted people to know that my fiance used to walk this plane like you and I have the same conversation as you and I speak about wrestling like we have sports, all these different topics. She used to go to the gym with me and stuff. I wanted people to know she did the same common things that you and I did. And, you know, that's, and as long as I get to speak your name, and as long as we keep your name going, these conversations, as long as I have these platforms, I'm always going to speak your name, you know? So uh, in this crazy time, you know, where I understand that it's hard to keep your eyes to the sky, I have no choice but to have to keep my eyes to the sky because God's goodness has just been so evident in my life that I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a son of God. I'm a, I'm God's soldier right there. You know, I'm always going to stick by his side on this one. So that's where I'm at on that topic. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's right. Keep your eyes to the sky, y'all. And that's right. Look at the ground, too. Definitely. Especially if you're barefoot. You don't want to step on a Lego. It'll mess hurt <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Worst pain of all time. All time. <laughs> I don't know why those little things. <laughs> I have no idea either. And I think they hurt a little bit. Like the pain is magnifying when it's nighttime or something. Like, I don't know why. When you just least expect it, once the lights are off and you step on a Lego, it's over. You might as well. You might as well call it a season. It's the equivalent of an ACL tear. <laughs> you might as well just retire, <laughs> just forfeit the day tomorrow. You know, it's, it's it's a tough pain. Like you can't walk it off. You wish somebody would get the wheelchair and wheel you back to bed. But you know, we we keep on pushing forward. But yeah, that Lego pain may be one some of the worst physical pain of all time. <laughs> Yeah, I can say that again, man. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's why you got to stay grounded. Keep your eyes on the ground, both the ground and the sky. Indeed, that's right. That's right. Keep looking up and keep looking down to make sure that you're dodging those Legos, those traps. That's right. Because Satan got plenty of them out there. Heck, humans got them, too. Heck, even we got our own traps. <laughs> That's the other part folks don't even want to talk about, but we don't even want to get to that part of it. But folks, new need to get all up in this magical book of yours. That's both available in ebook and physical book and probably audio book of the near future. So for those who want to keep in contact with King James himself and buy some copies of his magical books and keep in contact with you and keep up with all that you're doing, What's the best way for folks to do so, man? Sure. You can find me on social media at James M. Rubicava. I'm on all social, I'm on almost all social platforms. Let me put that caveat out there. I am not on dating websites. So you won't find me on all social media platforms, but you will find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find me again at James M. Rubicava. And then you can find me at my website, which is the title of the book, the light through the point ring dot com. Uh, you could join the newsletter. You could directly email me there. Uh, feel free to contact me. I respond pretty quickly. You know, uh, you just never know when somebody, somebody's, uh, you know, the words, words of God, you know, some words of advice could turn somebody's life around in a split second. You just never know. So uh, please feel free to contact me um, and I'll get, I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. Follow James and all of his wonderful social media platforms and know he's not on dating sites. And he brought a good point. I forgot, I guess, dating sites, what kind of social media sites? Because you got to be social, you know, for the online dating. <laughs> Pray to God you don't get catfish if you do some online dating. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly why I stay away from that. That's the crazy as it is. And then the thing, 
you're going to find somebody online, especially with the, the story I'm telling you, there's no way I'm going to rebound off of that one. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I understand the dating game. I know the cold world out there, but uh, dating apps, dating websites is just not for me. God bless everybody who found love off of them, but uh, just not for me. So most social media platforms, you will find me at James Andrew Bogava, but not dating websites. You will not find me there. <laughs> oh, man. Duly noted. Now I'm going to keep that in mind whenever someone asks me. It's like, hey, you can follow me on all social. No, nope, nope. I'll just I have to list them now. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Uh, Got to love when folks bring new thought or things you never considered to the forefront. So check all that stuff in the show notes. Buy copies of his magical books. And if you already got a copy and you're listening to this show, buy a copy for your friend. Tell them about it. Buy for a penguin or a cat or a camel, y'all. It's good stuff indeed. That's right, especially those camels with the big humps that shine on hump day, y'all. That's right, that light and that darkness, baby. So, <laughs> any parting words before we close up shop, my man? Again, thank you for having me on the platform. And if I could speak to the audience, I would just say, it's head 10 toes down onto the ground, so one foot in front of the other, and just take it day by day. And you were telling that situation, you're telling that negativity that you're not getting me today. So just take it one day at a time. Turn that tragedy into triumph and put one foot in front of the other. How's it going, you super special, awesome human? Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. Heck, even shoot myself or the guest an email and let them know what you liked most about this interview so that way they can stay inspired to keep pushing out great work.